If wood were truly fragile, the Viking Age would have ended at the shoreline. Instead, Viking ships crossed the North Atlantic, survived salt water, freezing spray, and constant wetting, and in some cases still exist today after a thousand years. Their halls stood through long winters, heavy snow, and damp ground. This durability was not accidental, and it was not the result of superior ancient forests. Vikings cracked the rot-proof code by understanding something modern builders forgot. Rot is not caused by water alone, and wood does not need to be sealed to survive. It needs to be prepared, fed the right chemistry, and allowed to breathe. The Viking approach treated rot as a biological problem, not a material flaw. Modern construction treats wood rot as inevitable and tries to fight it with chemicals. Vikings treated rot as a biological process that could be starved, slowed, and controlled. Fungi require moisture, oxygen, and food. Vikings focus first on removing the food, then on managing moisture, and only lastly on surface protection. This layered approach is, well, honestly, the reason there would survive conditions that destroy modern treated lumber. Tree selection and timing removed decay before it even began. Vikings selected slow-grown trees from dense forests. These trees produce tight growth rings and high resin content, both of which, you know, resist decay naturally. More importantly, trees were felled during winter dormancy. Sap was low, sugars were minimal, and moisture content was reduced. This single decision dramatically weakened the ability of fungi to colonize the wood. Modern forestry abandoned this practice for speed, not because it failed. You can apply this today by sourcing winter-cut logs or air-dried lumber whenever possible. One of the most counterintuitive Viking techniques was soaking timber in water. Logs were, you know, submerged in rivers or coastal waters for extended periods. This process leached out sugars and starches that fungi feed on, while leaving the structural fibres intact. Cold water slowed microbial activity while flushing away nutrients. The result was wood that rot organisms really struggled to digest. This explains why ancient dock pilings and submerged timbers often survive for centuries. For modern use, soaking posts or beams before drying can, well, significantly extend their lifespan. After soaking, timber was dried slowly, often over many years. Slow drying allowed the cell walls to compress evenly, increasing density and reducing cracking. Modern kiln drying removes moisture too quickly, leaving wood stressed and uh, vulnerable to moisture cycling. Air-dried wood absorbs less water, dries faster, and, you know, resists decay for a longer time. Vikings frequently exposed wood to controlled heat, or, you know, light charring. This reduced hemicellulose content, sealed pores, and created an environment hostile to fungi and insects. Unlike modern treatments, heat altered the wood itself rather than simply coating it. This technique can actually be reproduced today by lightly charring surfaces before, say, oil or tar application. Pine tar was not, you know, just a surface paint. 
It was actually heated and applied to warm wood, so it penetrated deeply. Tar repelled water, discouraged insects, and stayed flexible even in cold conditions. Most importantly, it did not trap moisture. Repeated applications over time, well, they turned wood into a composite material that was resistant to rot, salt, and weather. Warm pine tar, apply it generously, allow absorption, and repeat. This simple process, when done correctly, actually outperforms many modern preservatives. The design ensured that water never lingered. Viking structures, you know, shed water quite aggressively. Roofs were really steep, planks overlapped, and joints actually tightened when wet. Airflow was constant throughout. Wood was rarely trapped against soil or sealed inside non-breathing layers. You can apply this by prioritizing slope, drainage and ventilation over perfect sealing. You see, the Viking rot-proof code always assumed maintenance. Ships were retarred, you know, and roofs were repaired early. Wood was never ignored until failure. You know, this mindset is really absent from modern construction, which uh, promises permanence, but so often delivers only decay. So, why does this knowledge matter now? Well, the Viking method actually offers resilience without any industrial dependence. It allows builders, survivalists, and honestly, serious students of history to create long-lasting structures using simple materials and time-tested principles. If this breakdown gave you a deeper understanding of why Viking wood endured when modern wood fails, do consider supporting In the Beginning by subscribing, sharing this with fellow history enthusiasts, and, you know, helping keep serious historical knowledge alive.